Chairman of the Joint Special School Building Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there's no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom through the city's IT department for this electronic meeting. All members of the Joint Special School Building Committee have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously listen to this meeting through dialing the following number, 978-990-5298, and using the password 273-974. The public may also view this meeting on Comcast Channel 99 that may have changed, uh, I'll see if they, IT jumps in. Uh, providing public notice of the necessary information, we previously had given notice of the, to the public of the necessary information for accessing the meeting through public postings. Instructions have also been provided on the City of Nashville's website at www.nashuanh.gov and publicly noticed at City Hall and the Hunt Memorial Library. Provide, we also provide a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during a meeting if there are any problems with access. If anyone has a problem accessing the meeting via telephone or channel 99, please call 603-821-2049 and they will help you connect. Adjourning the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting via the methods mentioned above, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes will be taken in this meeting via roll call. We will start the meeting by taking roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also let us know whether there's anyone in the room with you that you can hear the meeting and why you are attending remotely. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Dowd. Present. And I can hear proceedings. I am alone practicing social distancing via the governor's orders. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright. I believe she's at another meeting, which I was just at. She probably, she might be joining us uh, later. Alderwoman Clee. I am here. I can hear everything. I am alone. And um, Mr. Chairman, it is on uh, channel 99. Thank you. Yep. Alderwoman Lou. Yes, I can hear you. I'm here alone and um, following governor's orders. Alderwoman Wilshire. I'm here. I'm alone and I am social distancing due to the governor's order. Ms. Bishop. I don't think she's I'm here. here. Oh, she's here. here. Okay. Yep. I'm here. Um, I can hear you guys. I don't know what the alone thing you're talking about. <laughs> My kids are here. Um, for social distancing, we're doing Zoom meetings. Ms. Brown? I am here. I am alone in the room, and I am practicing social distancing. OK. Ms. Julio? Hi, I am here. I'm alone in the room. I'm practicing social distancing and I'm running into problems with the charger for my laptop. Um, it's not functioning all of a sudden. So if I leave you suddenly sometime during the meeting, I just disappear. It's not for lack of interest. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Mr. Garino is here um, by himself and um, I am practicing social distancing. Ms. Raymond? Um, I'm here. Um, I'm never alone because um, I have children and this is my dining room, um, but they will not unduly influence me this evening. Um, so we are all practicing social distancing together and obviously I can hear everybody. Thanks. Okay. Um, also, we have uh, Mr. Smith, I believe. Yes. 
Yep. And Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes, I'm here. And we have Mr. Dubois. Yes, I'm here. Alone. Okay. Mr. Ouellette. Yes, I'm here and can hear you. Thank you. Okay. And we have others with us. Um, I believe. Um, not sure. Uh, let me see. We have. Yeah. Ken Latimer, who's from Harvey, and, and Kim Misko, who's from Harvey as well. Okay. And we have also uh, Ms. Leonardi. Is, is she with the TV or Jack, Jacqueline Leonardi? I believe she's from the public. Yeah. Oh, oh, she's from the public. Okay. Um, I, I think they unmute the public when it comes time for public comment. Okay, and we also have someone else from the public, maybe uh, Jeff Ponert. He's part of CTV. Oh, he's part of cable. Okay. And Linda Harry Gathright has joined us. Okay, great. Yeah. All and I right. Believe, I believe I got everybody. Okay. So we have a quorum. Yes, we do. So. Uh, if there are no objections, I'd like to waive the reading of the minutes of the prior meeting of May 28th, 2020, and place them on file. Remarks by Chairman. Uh, thank you, everyone. We're getting into the throes of getting this project off and running. Uh, we'll be approving uh, contracts and getting updates on what's going on at the fairgrounds, which is uh, sort of off and running to, to some degree and and the the uh, following work that will start in Penetruck. so uh, and there's also a presentation from the architect and the construction manager uh, school administration mr smith do you have anything you want to say at this point uh good evening everybody just that you should have received a couple follow-up emails from uh, sharon frothingham um one was uh, i believe this morning or this afternoon where we sent along the bid award recommendations from harvey and then uh, prior to that we sent out the revised financial uh sheets uh, along with an additional invoice for page street rental and we'll talk about about all that uh, when the time comes mm -hmm. all right thank you so the items for discussion we will start with the architects report uh Mr. Herman, I mean, Mr. <laughs> Jamie Willett, uh, do you want to? Yes, give... hi, uh, Jamie Willett, uh, architect project manager for um, Harriman, um, working on the three middle schools here in Nashua. Um, I do have a presentation today. I hope everyone has uh, been shared that uh, for this meeting so they could take a little pass at it. I will note there are a few edits that I did make uh, just before the meeting here that I saw a few spelling mistakes. So um, I will try to point those out as corrections as we get there. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Oh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Would the IT please let him share? Jeff? Okay, you should be able to do it now. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, tonight, um, I just wanted to give, kind of like I did last uh, meeting, uh, earlier this, uh, I guess it was last month now, um, I'm going to give some design updates for the three middle schools, Fairgrounds, Penichuk, and the new middle school, and then go over the schedule, uh, the, the coming schedule. Some of those schedule bullet items are in the design updates. So <clears throat> we'll start off with Fairgrounds Middle School. So that one's been absolutely the most active project uh, over the past month since the last time we met. Some of those more recent submissions um, are kind of in bold on your sheets or up on the screen there. Um, we've issued to Harvey a early demolition construction documents right after our last meeting. Um, there was a teacher's informational meeting uh, where we did a, a meeting similar to this and, and went through kind of the program uh, as it laid out. 
moving plans, um, schedule, um, and and just kind of went over all the different aspects that they can expect at least at least arriving in school and through maybe the summer or into the fall. Um, we gave them a, a bigger schedule overall, but kind of really hit those other those earlier deadlines uh, bigger up up front. And then just shared overall plans and walked through and listened to questions and comments and, and answered everything we could. I think we actually answered every single question we saw, um, but I, I don't want to be mistaken and say that's a fact. Um, early, uh, then we issued early civil construction documents. Um, so out on the street for fairgrounds right now with, with Harvey um, is the, you know, they're working on the portable stuff and, and um, the structural package has gone to them, the demolition package and the civil um, package uh, is all out to them. And then just, just last week, we issued the rest of the documents. So the, they, they have uh, construction documents in hand, um, and we're looking to issue uh, a few uh, revisions to some of that stuff that includes some of the drawings that just had needed some additional changes. Uh, some have come, actually, I think some came yesterday to them, we'll have a couple more tomorrow, all part of a normal construction process. Um, we get out all the drawings and, and just kind of do that final check. And see that we, you know, oh, this, you know, these dot, these eyes aren't dotted, those T's aren't crossed. So we, we try to do that and get that out to them. So I, I didn't have anything to share visually for fairgrounds. Uh, we shared kind of some of that stuff in the last meeting. Everything's out there to the contractor, and I think uh, going forward, you're going to kind of see more from from Harvey on that than you are from us. Over at the Penichuk Middle School. Um, Really, the, the big item that's happened design-wise uh, is an early vestibule construction documents. Um, I think the, the uh, JSSBC has been privy to the discussions on the uh, security vestibule uh, work uh, grant that, that uh, Sean was able to and that school was able to procure um, to do some upgrades to the uh, vestibules and entrances to the building. Um, so Penichuk was one that needed to uh, use up those funds prior to the end of the year. So we issued uh, a little concentrated set of documents for that project before the rest of the project comes out. Uh, so that work can begin this summer. Um, so that's the one item you, you see there. And then upcoming mile, milestone uh, stones for the project is design development uh, in mid-July and then a planning board submission in August. And of course, there's CDs and stuff coming even beyond that. But I just kind of focused on the early, the, the closer uh, deadlines. Uh, last time we we met, I shared some areas. I think I shared STEM and and uh, some some other areas in the building. Uh, one area that I had mentioned that we weren't quite ready to share. We finished it a few days after we met, um, and finished as a as a relative term. It's nothing's finished yet. It's just. Uh, kind of got it to the point where we can share uh, what some of that looks like. This came out of our uh, programming meetings with the librarian and, and a big narrative that she had given us. Um, so I wanted to share what it, some of that looks like uh, based on those discussions. Uh, and again, it's not finalized and, and we'd love to meet with her again and she'd love that, I'm sure. Uh, and that's the plan. So uh, at this point though, this is following kind of her guidelines and, and recommendations. Um, so on the, the left, the plan on the left is, is the, 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 the learning commons, so to speak. Um, there's a couple of corridors and, and it's, it's not, you can't see the full building, but this is on the, the left end closest to Manchester Street. Um, you come through kind of where the classroom wings are into this corridor and, and come into the library. You can either come in on this side, which is closer to the sixth grade or the special ed areas right now, or the... Uh, eighth and seventh grade wings are on the top side. They come in, but they, if you come in here, you come in near the circulation desk. There's a group of, of seating. There's some soft seating areas. Um, there's a, a, a display on this wall where kids can gather around and, and have their presentation or review, review items up on the wall. Um, there's these little white, white things over here are all um, uh, uh, shelving for the for the the uh, books and and whatnot, and they carry along the wall. Um, they're movable, um, so that you can, there's a there's a projection screen up in between these windows. Um, these are all on on casters, so they can move out of the way, so that you could have a you know public meeting or a bigger group meeting, um, and even present on a a, uh, a presentation board here on the on the left. 
uh, two little rooms to the top are these small group rooms. Uh, one of the comments that she had given was that uh, she really needs some rooms where people can break out and have groups, small groups and larger groups, um, and just have some learning uh, activity. Right now, her space, she feels, is this one big space, and it's hard to have a, a classroom doing something and then also have students collecting books there for a different assignment. Um, so this allows the library to occur, our learning commons to occur, also have some small breakout rooms, and then a larger group room down below. Um, and then a mechanical room uh, was is added below to to support this space. Um, she has a circulation desk, uh, a little office work area behind her, and of course we wanted to incorporate a restroom into that space uh, for students and staff as needed out what so they don't have to go you know, down the hallway to find the next the next bathroom while they're while they're in this space. The uh, I guess one last comment I would I would mention is is there's a courtyard area here. Um, and the library has views into that courtyard as well as access, you know, into that space if they desire to go out and read or whatever, whatever activity may need, be needed in that space. It might be a little bit difficult to see the numbering, but number seven is a view that faces toward this kind of entrance here. Um, you can see you're kind of looking from behind the bookcases uh, out over the tables and kind of into that view of the courtyard right up in here. You can see a, a the presentation board TV that I was talking about here. Off to the right is a, a couple of computer stations uh, for students that just want to do some research, um, and maybe they don't have their own their own laptops or computers to work from. The uh, image above is just a corridor looking down toward the library. Lots of glass, you know, so you can see that courtyard space as you're approaching. It'd be a nice, uh, well lit space, inviting, um, you know, and and and, they, and of course the views of nature. And the next view is just a, a same same plan, uh, just some additional views. Number eight, uh, again, you're up in this corner, up on the top left, facing back, maybe closer toward the circ. Actually, you can see the circ desk in the back, um, and she has views, and you can see into the uh, large group uh, project area. Number nine is coming in from the seventh and eighth grade side of the entrance. Um, and again, just looked over some of those spaces. You can see the projection screen uh, in the down position. This would be a motorized screen that can go up and down in the soffit. Um, you're seeing a few stray lines there. Those are actually the bookcases that seem to be really close, but it'll be positioned so it's in front of those bookcases. And of course, 10 is the circ desk. Um, it'll be a lot more interesting when it's done. There'll be some, you know, some nice, uh, you know, perhaps some, uh, reveals in the face and all that and, and, and a nice counter, but this is just kind of the general, the general uh, design that we're looking at. Mm. All right, so that's, that's kind of the new, the new big new development over at the uh, Penichuk Middle School. And again, we're pushing toward design development um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we've been, we've been pushing really hard on that, uh, especially, especially this week after Fairgrounds got on. Now we moved some additional people on uh, to, to keep that moving. So at the new middle school, um, a few a few bullets coming up. Uh, I know last time we talked about schematic designs coming up. Uh, we're still working on that and pushing that one along. Um, design development is is out in the fall, and then a planning board submission would be near the end of the year or, or late uh, late fall. I did want to share. Oh, actually, I forgot that we had a. Uh, here's where some of those corrections. Yeah, okay, this is where some of the corrections are uh, noted from my presentation. I was thinking this was wrong too, but it's not. Um, so we had a special ed uh, out of district meeting with Marsha Bagley um, last Friday. Um, uh, Donna Fitzpatrick was part of that and helped orchestrate putting that together. Um, this really is was looking at the that lower uh, ground level portion of the building and finding out you know what what that looks like, what that should look like, what it's needed in that space. Uh, and well, the first correction you'll see there is, I think mine says AVA based before. That was supposed to be ABA. It's an applied behavior analysis based uh, learning that they use there. Um, these are all these are all notes that we came right out of our meeting uh, with Marsha. Um, they have an intensive instruction on the uh, intensive instruction on the autism spectrum. So this area is looking to address that uh, instruction. Two of these programs exist at Sunset, Sunset Heights already. Um, but what happens is they come out of the elementary school and there's a gap in the middle school that it doesn't, it doesn't 
really exist in the Nashua School District um, for the middle school bracket, the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And so this lower area is to to is looking to be used to support that gap that occurs at the middle school uh, age for the for the autism children. Um, some of those spaces that we talked about were classroom spaces, speech speech uh, pathologists, OTPT area, which is an addition to the school OTPT. They need their own space, um, calming rooms, support spaces, office and meeting spaces. That'll all kind of uh, fill in this lower level that we had talked about prior. Um, they have a lot of one-to-one -one ratio, which is one you know one teaching staff, one student. Um, it's a, a uh, more uh, needs based, so there's this that individual lear, uh, teacher working with that one student. And coming out of that meeting, we found next steps that we need to do is me uh, meeting with uh, Liz Bala, and actually Donna just sent another uh, individual that we should be talking with, and I, I forget her name, um, but I'm Crystal sure it's Crystal, Crystal, Crystal Siegel. Siegel. Thank you, Donna. Crystal Siegel. We're going to orchestrate a meeting uh, with the two of them. Uh, Liz Ball is the district DCPA, which I understand is a board certified behavioral analyst um, to help support that that lower error area. So that's our next steps for that particular meeting. I wanted to, I wanted to update everybody on that meeting that was that was had. And over there, I wanted to also share some of the the plan adjustments that we've made uh, based on our programming meetings that we've had you know several months ago. Um, a lot of it had to do with 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 not just the the uh, classroom areas, but really this, this uh, we, I like to call it the public area of the school, the area that you know, everybody uses, uh, including maybe even people like the public coming in for you know, basketball games or, or a performance um, that, might be, that might be needed. Um, so some of those included moving the UA spaces around. Uh, we looked at moving computer labs, uh, robotics, uh, health classrooms, still in the same area, although the computer, one of the computer labs was over on the other uh, side of the building, and it was, it was really desired to be over here. Um, so we moved that into this space. Um, one of the comments that we, we heard was locker adjacency to the gym. So before, if you recall, we had the stage. I guess I can point. We had the stage in this area, and then the lockers were off to one side. And, and so the gymnasium, the, the, um, the, the boys and girls had to use the same corridor and then would split off into two different rooms. And, and understandably that wasn't, you know, that was a concept design. Um, we wanted to make sure we had the space uh, allocated, um, but it was also trying to function trying to get around that stage. We've, we've corrected that in twofold. One, we've separated a corridor down to the girls' room and the boys' room, really central to the gymnasium. Uh, works really well, works great. You actually have a space where there's a, a a gym teacher for each each uh, boy or girl, or or maybe there's one, but they have their own room and it's separate right off the gym, and they actually have uh, sight lines right into the gymnasium, um, so they have uh, oversight of that particular space. So that worked out fantastic. Um, we also took that stage space. Um, there was a real big, uh, well, actually a, a large outcry on the fact that the stage really didn't belong in the gymnasium. The gymnasium functions. Um, could be occurring at the same time, potentially a performance might be trying to be had or, or, or they might be trying to practice and, and the gym's happening. So we pulled that apart. Um, and, and, what, and actually it could be twofold depending on what, how the school wants to go with it. But now the stage uh, faces this large cafeteria area. And we have, of course, we have these, uh, uh, st these stairs that we keep referring to, the community stairs that are kind of this elevated, uh, continually elevated, seating area or performance area, however, however one, one might want to use it. And we'll look a little bit at an image coming up on what that might look like. Um, and then so they can, they can gather around here and have this performance space. Also, I guess we've, we've also had um, instances where we have a performance space on each side. So you could have a closable uh, wall or curtain on this side, probably like a more like a wall type system. Um, and then be able to open up this side should should the school desire to have performances on this side, and then you close the other side up. Um, so that that's something we have not uh, fully gone through with the school um, and, and our and 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 others, but it's um, something we're investigating or exploring. 
So I kind of zoom in a little bit on this and, and show some precedent images that, that kind of give uh, some inspirations to us um, when we start thinking about these spaces. <clears throat> so this one here, um, I gave credits here on the, on the, over in the text here. It's the top is Chinook Trail Middle School in Colorado Springs. The architect was RTA Architects and MOA Architects. So that's its upper image here. So uh, it, it doesn't mean that we're gonna have the, the look of that, but it, a, a, it's a precedent. So it's something that we, we maybe aspire to or, or, or want to use as, as a uh, you know, memory, memory or a design boost um, when we start placing our design elements. So you can see this is kind of an open cafeteria space. It does have a, a, um, a stage off, the, off to the end here or in the front of it. Um, and then there is some communica uh, communicating space across the front of it. So you can see people might use the doors through here um, and, and traverse through this space. The one below it um, but there is the Colin Powell Middle School in Madison, Illinois. Uh, look at architects worked on that one. Uh, we, what would it kind of uh, caught our eye on this one is this really neat um, proscenium opening, this wood uh, jumping out and pushing toward you, um, causing attention right into the stage area. Uh, we thought something like that may, may cause some interest uh, here as you're looking, you know, walking through in the cafeteria space, pointing kind of into that stage area. So we're exploring that one a little bit. Uh, on the next next slide here, we have uh, George Wagner School in Georgetown, Texas. Uh, the architect is Huckabee. Um, so that is really, I mean, it was, it's funny because we did this design and then we found this image. Um, and it really plays into exactly kind of what we're thinking. So here's the community stairs. You know, it's got a set of stairways on the side, which is here. Um, and then these these seating areas. And, you, and they're actually sitting across the cafeteria and looking at a stage. Um, and, and it's, it, I mean, this is a lot longer span than we, we have in our space, um, but you can see how that would kind of be resembled in, in a certain space like that. And we do have, you know, inherently, we do have a catwalk sort of space up above over here that you're not seeing that leads to the library on the second floor. Um, so what we're gonna, we're gonna keep exploring that a little bit, but I did wanna share these images just to, to I think it's always exciting to see some ideas um, and not just a, a 2D plan, that's hard to, hard to perceive what that might look like. So uh, la kind of the last slide here is the schedule. Um, you know, Fairgrounds has gone basically right through the construction document set. So now we're heading into construction. I know Harvey will give a little report of where they're at in a few moments. Uh, Penichuk again is, is uh, heading into DD here in the mid July. Um, right after that, we'll start looking at construction documents. At this point here, when Harvey receives their documents, they're gonna do an estimate and they're gonna report back to, to uh, you folks. And the new middle school, you know, I know this schematic design keeps pushing off a little bit. It's a big design. Um, and, and again, I think I mentioned last time, most of our focus has been trying to get that fairgrounds for the summer construction. But it'll, you're going to see a lot more work happening in the new middle school um, as, the other, as this other one kind of pushed off to being finished. Um, and so you're going to start seeing more work there. Uh, one note that I didn't actually get on the slide that um, Harvey and I had spoke about, uh, Mr. Dubois had emailed me just just uh, last night <clears throat> was that the construction for uh, Penichuk is actually not slated to start in the dead of winter. It's actually going to push into early spring. So um, you see that there. So that this little area might play a little bit left or right. Um, it's just a mis miscommunication on this on this actual slide, not not between the group. It's it's what we've been talking about all along. All right, let me close out of this if I can figure it out. Yeah. All right, great, thank you. Sharon, go ahead. You're on mute. Yeah. Okay, um, I just, as a retired school librarian, I just really want to thank you for working so closely with Emily Sand from Penichuk. Um, what you've put together working with her is, is what is most current in library world. Learning Commons is the way to go. Um, it looks like a lot of her ideas that she voiced to me last year when I toured her school 
you've been able to, to go ahead and work with them. And I just so appreciate it because I, I was in a school that built a new library and we had to fight tooth and nail for every bit of input we got with the architects. Um, so I am just deeply grateful to you all for working so closely with her. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. She's she's great. She uh, I couldn't believe the research she had done. It was fantastic. It actually helped us a really lot. And that's that was fantastic. So. Thank you. It's all appreciated. Alderman McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know we're only in the schematic of the um, of the middle, the new middle school um, project, so we we haven't really gone definitive and, and so on. And this might be as much to you, uh, Mr. Chairman, as it is to Mr. Willett. Um, the the discussion and so on about this stage. Um, how much is something like that going to add to this project? I know we probably don't even know at this point, but are we looking for? Um, a high cost. Um, well, I think it is important to have entertainment, and not not so much entertainment, but um, the arts in the school. It's extraordinary. Um, I just, to me, some of these look a little bit on more on the elaborate um, kind of side. Does it add to significantly add to the cost of this project? Yes. Because I don't remember it being there at the very beginning. Is I guess what I'm talking about. Just for clarification, there were some questions originally about putting an auditorium, which is much much different than this stage. Uh, the, this stage has always been part of the cost uh, element. And it, uh, it's just that the, the school did not want it uh, permanently in the gymnasium because of the conflict of uh, We still have a lot of phases and documents to go through before the, any of that's finalized, but uh, turning it around and having it point towards the ca cafeteria, much like uh, Fairgrounds uh, Middle School right now. Right. Okay, I just wanted to, to, to get that clarified that it, this is not the same thing as turning it into an auditorium. No, no, no. Um, and no. we're not going in that direction. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. Mrs. Brown, did you have your hand up? Yes, thank you, Mr. Dowd. And thanks, Jamie, for your great um, presentation. I really appreciated it. and. I like the fact that you've been doing a great job integrating um, teacher and librarian and different department concerns into the plan as you're going along for those modifications for Penichuk and Fairgrounds. That's great. I really appreciate that. Um, so I actually uh, feel kind of the opposite of Alderman Clee. I still think we're doing our performing arts students a bit of a disservice by not planning for like a true stage and auditorium setup, um, especially compared to what they'll be leaving at Elm Street. But I understand that at this point, um, it's not gonna be a feasible option with the budget. So having said that, um, I wanted to use my personal experience um, as where you moving into the final finalization of the plans uh, to give a few ideas to the open flex space option. Um, it's kind of funny, if you've ever watched any of the high school musicals or like any musical on Disney Channel recently, uh, the, those images you put up there, Jamie, were very similar to what is trending in high school movies right now. <laughs> um, so, you know, maybe if it's good enough for Disney, it's good enough for Nashua. So, <laughs> but um, anyway, but here's my, so here's my word of caution. I actually attended an open concept middle school uh, in Sweet Ohio in the 90s, um, Burndale Junior High. It's since been torn down and replaced with some other stuff. But, um, our school had a mini stage, quite similar to what you're talking about. In the cafeteria, we had the kitchen off to one side with like a partition half wall. Um, I will say this new design is much more pleasing to the eye, much more uplifting. There's nice high ceilings that gives a much airier feel as opposed to like a 1970 underground bunker. Um, but <laughs> um, so that leads me to two major questions as you're developing that space. One, I think it was a really great idea to put the entrance opposite the gyms. You can use those spaces twice. Um, but I'm questioning um, ambient smells and ambient noise. So if there's something going on in that, if you're utilizing that space as a cafeteria and um, going on in the middle of the entire building and the classroom space is upstairs, are we putting a really high priority on a really good quality ventilation system and some really good uh, noise abatement plans um, in that design. 
Yeah, I mean, ab ab ventilation, absolutely. We, you know, everything's going to be, uh, you know, to to standards or better. Uh, you know, especially a kitchen. You know, we have hoods in there that have great ventilation uh, over all the cooking equipment. Um, something that may not actually exist at some of the other schools, potentially not not necessarily the middle schools, but just other schools in general. Um, so yes, ventilation is is uh, uh, one of those top of those list items. You know, it's uh, not only required by code, but it, it's uh, as part of education. You know, we all know, every one of us know, just sitting even in an office or at home. You know, if you don't have a window open, it's stuffy. You don't have a, it's just not a good learning opportunity. That includes smells from a kitchen. That's that's not just that's not just uh, you know a stuffy room. That's in general. Um, acoustics, yes, we are looking at acoustics. Um, you know, there's a library above that, that uh, you know, I think has, some of the group has shared or somebody in the group has shared with us, may have been this group or, or the teachers or whatnot, about concerns about noise from below. Uh, our walls will be, you know, will be well rated for sounds and acoustics. Um, and, and we will even look at uh, looking at uh, different ways to mitigate those sounds uh, beyond just just a wall. You know, it might be panel, sound panels, acoustic panels. Uh, panels in the ceiling that that help deaden some of that sound. If it's a if it's an exposed deck, it would be acoustic decking uh, made to help mitigate that sound. So all those are in consideration. Um, I do appreciate that comment uh, specifically about the acoustic because we we can understand how that would be a a concern with that big space and and right as you kind of enter the building. Thank you very awesome. much. Yeah, I, I, a couple things. Uh, one, today's technology allows for much better sound isolation and ventilation equipment than uh, in the past schools. Uh, so uh, I think you'll see a vast improvement there. Also, uh, it's still the city's intention to keep the Elm Street Auditorium and the middle schools and the high schools have the opportunity to use that, that new really renovated space when it's done. Um, and uh, so they won't lose it. Uh, it's it's the intent to have it there so they can use it and uh, um, it will be enhanced from what you see today. So, okay, anyone else that has questions for the architect? It, <laughs> Jamie, I do I do have a question. It's not for me. Uh, I I just have a, a general question on on how um, individuals here feel about. Um, if that stage does end up there, and of course, I'm going to bring this back to the schools and stuff, but, uh, you know, having, having both sides being functional as opposed to just one side, is there any, I'm just looking to hear some feedback on, on what, what, you know, individuals feel on that. <clears throat> Mrs. Brown? I, I think that's great. I mean, I think um, the fact that you could have two groups of kids using that after hours at the same time. Um, the basketball courts, especially the gyms, they're not only just used by the kids in the middle school. Um, the Biddy basketball program citywide is one of the largest um, active programs for any of the kids, and it's cheap, 20 bucks. Sign your kid up, it's great. Um, but the, so I think it was really wise to make it so you can use both of those spaces. Um, I liked the imagery you were put, putting up there, like the, uh, the acoustical panels moving out, coming, engaging the rest of the room. I think that was visually stimulating. Um, but I think in the long term, I would rather spend money on making a really great amphitheater, amphitheater effect for sound rather than what it looks like. I think that would be a better priority um, from like a music and performance perspective. If you can really, um, you know, even if it's kind of ugly, you can always paint it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I think. Uh, but I think making the sound panels very functional would be the priority, in my opinion. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Uh, yes, Mrs. Raymond. Uh, thanks. So, um, Heather Raymond from the school board as well. Um, I like the new design very much. Um, I think it was a very wise choice to um, change the bathroom access. Um, I have a middle schooler, so I have a little bit of insight into um, that stage of development. And so I think that was wise. Um, I also like um, the cafetorium better than the gymatorium. Um, just in general, I think it's more functional for more people. Um, I don't know anything about acoustics, so I will um, trust Mrs. Brown's opinion on that. Uh, but I like it. I like the schematics. Um, I still 
don't like the communal stairs. Um, but I think um, that is a decision that is not up to me. So I'll roll with it. Anyone else? No? All right, well, moving on. Mr. Dubois, you want to do the construction manager's report or and probably uh, introduce your people once again so that we become more familiar with who they are. Folks that are with me tonight, Kathy Misko, senior project manager, and Ken Lemaire, who is our project manager, who will be speaking here in a little bit. Um, as was stated earlier, folks, we have mobilized out at the fairgrounds. We had a great meeting with the administration and the teachers prior to, so they understood how everything was going to be set up and how we were going to operate and separate ourselves as much as possible from the kids and the, and the faculty and the school. So we are on site. Uh, goal is to start demolition on Monday in administration, get that going. As Mr. Willett said earlier, we are out to bid for uh, the rest of the project at Fairgrounds, the final construction documents have been received. The bids are due July 9th after the holiday. Uh, that will hopefully by uh, the July 23rd uh, joint special meeting will have, a, it might be a pretty lengthy night that night, uh, approving uh, contracts for subcontractors. Uh, we have also, <clears throat> we've got the uh, shop drawings in and the precaster is currently fabricating the foundations for the foundation piers, the precast foundation piers for the portable. So that's underway. Uh, after tonight, uh, if we get approval on site work, you'll start seeing heavy equipment start rolling in. Uh, the goal is to get the street cut made for the new parent drop off and get that situated for the start of school in September. Uh, so we can actually uh, get parents used to pulling in and not within the bus loop, pulling into their own uh, loop area and dropping their kids off. So that's one of our goals is this summer is to finish that work to binder. We won't make it 100% complete, but it will be operational by the start of school. In terms of pen and check, we have been finalizing the cost for the security vestibule work uh, that, that needs to go on based on the grant that Mr. Smith received. Uh, we have also been finalizing all of the cost that's associated with relocating all of the utilities, less drainage. We're talking, as I said earlier, we're talking all of the communication lines, the city fiber line, the electrical connections to the portables, all that is has been planned out, priced out, and we will be presenting on July 6th uh, that cost for approval so we can get that work going as well. Uh, beyond that, I think tonight we have four, maybe five uh, packages to present, a couple for fairgrounds, a couple for uh, uh, for you folks for Penichuk, and I think uh, Mr. Smith will speak to that one. So I'm going to turn it over to Ken to talk about, uh, let's start with fairgrounds, Ken, in terms of site work. Sure. Uh, for everybody, uh, it's good to, good to see you guys this week. Um, so I guess, as uh, Mr. Duar Dubois just mentioned, we'll start with fairgrounds. Um, we have two important packages that we'd like to try to get approved tonight. Uh, so we'll start with uh, demolition and abatement. We did receive four bids. Three of the bids were demo and ab abatement combined, and one bid was abatement only. Uh, we are recommending advanced building systems of Salem, New Hampshire, in the amount of $432,600. Um, they are the low bid. Before you guys make a decision, there is one ad alternate, and uh, there is scope in the boiler room where we remove blue daubs as part of the abatement of that area. Uh, there is an ad alternate for $6,000 to replace that insulation after it has been removed. So that would be an ad alternate to the 432,600 figure that I gave earlier. Any questions? Linda, you're muted. Are there any questions? Sorry, I got muted. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, 
So the total the total value that we want a motion to cover. Currently, it's four thirty two six up for consideration, Mr. Dowd, is the replacement of the insulation. I would recommend it based on the space that's above it. Um, yep. If that's the case, at six thousand, it'd be four hundred thirty eight thousand six hundred dollars. All right. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the uh, the bid as just stated? Four hundred and what was it again, Carl? Four hundred with or without the insulation. Yeah. With. With the insulation is four hundred thirty eight thousand six hundred dollars. Would somebody like a motion? Make a motion. Yes. I'll make that motion. Okay, Alderman Wilshire made the motion. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Okay, <clears throat> on the motion, um, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gaffright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yeah. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Ms. Segarino votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. I have uh, uh, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay, Ken, do you have a, another um, bid that we want to approve? Yes. Uh, we have now, now we have site work. This is uh, still remains at fairgrounds. Uh, we received three bids for this scope of work. Uh, we're recommending Pachette Brothers of Manchester, New Hampshire. They are the low bid. Um, as with the last package, there are a few alternates that I'd like to run through, and then we can decide which ones apply and which ones, which mm -hmm. ones do not. At alternate number one, this is. Um, Increase asphalt overlay to three inches per detail A5 on drawing C50.1. There is a detail on the civil drawings that calls for asphalt thickness varying from 1.5 inches to three inches. Pichette Brothers has carried the 1.5 inches. To carry that full value of three inches of a thickness, it would be an additional $38,400. At alternate number two, this is the patch and overlay of the front courtyard. Um, more like the plaza in front of the new entry of the school and the north elevation. So the bus loop is shown to be overlaid and patched, but that entry, that entry area is not. So the add alternate to patch that area to make it match the new bus loop and make everything look brand new would be $8,000. Add alternate number three, this is more of a confirmation item. We do not believe that this is required or applicable. Uh, this is the stormwater pollution plan. Uh, we are not disturbing more than one acre at a time. And I believe uh, we will confirm that with Mr. Bullett, but we don't think that that is applicable to this project. At alternate number four, this is uh, the sanitary piping in lieu of storage tank at portable classrooms. Uh, the Harvey team were internally running some numbers uh, regarding the pumping costs. And we believe that it might be achievable to run the, the sanitary piping and, and not have to pay for those uh, pumping costs. So this is, again, this is another option for the portable classrooms. Are there I any questions interject. about any of the alternates? Ken, if I might interject, just for the folks at home and everybody else. The original concept was to provide a, a precast septic tank in the ground that would have to be pumped 500 gallons that would have to be pumped out periodically. Looking at the cost at 50 cents a gallon and not really understanding how often it would have to be pumped, but in the course of 12 months, uh, based on the cost of pumping raw sewage and disposing of it, based on the size of that tank, uh, you would be pumping that about four times. And I think we're going to Good chance we might exceed that in the course of a year, depending on the usage from the kids and the student and the uh, faculty. So for four thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars, the city would lock in that cost uh, as a you went you went on the risk of pumping 
cost being excessive of $4,325, I guess is what I'm saying. So it's, you know, originally I was a proponent of the tank. Uh, when we started looking at the cost to, to dispose of the raw sewage and what the cost of that was, looking at the size of the tank, we estimated that you get about four, uh, you get four truckfuls of that effluent being removed versus in over a period of 12 months. And I'm just, I suspect we may end up pumping that thing more than four times. So we're throwing it out there for your uh, decision uh, to be made tonight. Okay, so Carl or Ken, what is the total value of the contract, including alternatives one, two, and four? One, two, and four would be a total of six nine two five oh six. Six nine two five oh six. Do I have a motion? Oh, excuse me, Jamie. Hey, Jamie, do you want to? Yeah, I, I asked I asked the uh, civil engineer about alternate number three um, to get his input um, just just a, a little bit ago, um, and his comment was that um, the stormwater pollution plan. Um, New Hampshire is a non-delegated state, so the EPA actually has jurisdiction, um, and so the stormwater prevention plan is a do is docu document is required to be prepared by the EPA if you disturb over one acre, which this project does. Um, so I, 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 I'm not saying that definitely should be included, but it appears that based on what he described to me that it may be needed. What was the cost of alternative three? $7,500. All right. So now we're looking at uh, sixty-one six oh six. We were at six ninety-two five oh six, and we've had alternative three. What's the number? I have seven hundred seven hundred thousand and six dollars. Yeah, that's what I had too. <laughs> two plus thirty-eight four hundred plus. Mrs. Raymond, did you want to make that motion? Um, I can, but I also have a question. Sure. Yeah, Which one would you like first? Question. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, so I guess my I have two questions. Um, my first question is regarding option the add-on number three. Um, if as this goes forward, it turns out we don't need it, um, it, are they able to just not do it, or does our motion bind them to do it? And then my second question is about um, the asphalt to three inches. I just don't, I just don't know what that's for. I'm for it. It sounds like it's important. I just don't. I want to know what it does. If you want the school to last longer and not put a overburden on Sean Smith's uh, uh, very lucrative uh, budget, I su <laughs> highly suggest the three inches. No, I, uh, it sounds appropriate, but what does it do? Well, it, it thickens the, the, the amount of asphalt on the road, especially if we're going to have heavy fire trucks using it, uh, even to, for tests and things. Mm -hmm. And if they do trash trucks and stuff, I highly suggest we go with the three inches. Okay. Uh, can you ask, answer the first question, either Carl or Ken? Could you repeat that, what the I question was? Sorry. So the, the first the water. first question was regarding option the add on number three the stormwater. Um, yeah, I mean, if you approve this tonight, and I'd, I'd like to have further discussion with the civil engineer. It's a question of how we approach the site okay. and what we're going to get done. Um, I don't want to get in trouble with the EPA, but if no, it turns out we, we don't me. need it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't either. But it's how you approach it and phase it. Once you get it stabilized um, and you can open up another area, I think it's worth. For tonight's purposes, if you approve it and we turn out, it turns out that we don't need it, we're certainly not going to employ the and spend the money. Okay. We could we could follow up with you on that. We okay. would just we would just get a positive change order to add the money back into the budget. Okay, that answers my question. Uh, Mr. Smith is waving quite a bit. I thought maybe the flies over. You know, go ahead, Sean. <laughs> and 
Yeah. I'll after that. Um, yeah, so it, yes, as, as far as the additional asphalt, definitely for enough three inches and one and a half inch, it'll just uh, allow the surface to last a lot longer. And um, it's gonna, it'll hold up better to all the stresses it's gonna receive between now and the next time the school is renovated. Um, so I'm definitely in favor of that. Uh, the front courtyard as well, stormwater protection. Uh, I agree if we need it, then we need it. If not, then we're not gonna spend it. As far as the sanitary piping and the storage tank, Carl, um, it sounded to me like you're saying it was kind of a wash if we went with either approach. Um, if you're assuming four, you have to empty the tank four times and it's kind of a wash. But you're thinking it's going to be more if, depending on the use. Exactly, right? Sean. Yeah. Now it does. It depends on the use. So it's hard to figure how long, you know, whether the kids are going to use the, the restrooms in the in the school or in the portable themselves. Or they got, you know, again, they're all in the, in the main school at some point in time for you know cafeteria and uh, eating and what have you. So it's hard to estimate what the flow is going to be on a on a given basis on a daily given basis. So. But looking at it, I'm pressed to think that we're not going to be pumping more than four times in the course of 12 months. So when you look at it that way, you're locking, you're capping what that maximum would be, and that would be put the pipe in, and you'll never exceed. You don't have to worry about overrunning the, the pumping costs uh, and spending more money and somebody coming back going, hey, why do we spend... Five thousand or six thousand dollars pumping one for forty three hundred twenty five dollars. We could have put the pipe in the ground and tied it in to the sewer, the city sewer service. So it sounds to me like it's a little bit of a cheap insurance. Um, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we pump less, depending on what our task force decides about school when it's when it's going to start, if it starts, all that stuff. I mean, it could be much less pumping, but. For four thousand dollars, I don't. I think it's good insurance to go ahead and do the pipe. All set, Sean. Yes, I am. Yeah, I, I originally was for the tank, but uh, the more I think about it, uh, if since it's not a, a major difference and it's a heck of a lot less issues involved with getting it pumped and everything else. Plus, if if we do bring the kids back to school and then washing their hands a hundred times a day, that tank might fill up a lot faster than we think. So uh, I'm I'm in favor of all four alternatives. I have uh, well, okay. Before I get to the members, Jamie, did you have? I, I guess one one comment that comes to my mind is that space. Those portables are used as a temporary science room for short periods of time, um, not the entire school year. But there is a period of time when science rooms are in there. Those rooms can tend to use. Um, you know, water more than than a normal classroom may. So that kind of my two cents worth as I as I think about it a little bit. Okay, I have Alderman Clee, then Mrs. Brown. Thank you very much. I, I think um, Mr. Smith and Mr. Uh, Dubois already did answer this question, but I just want to make sure that I have it right. So um, I guess before I go any further, um, I I like alternate three to keep ourselves safe. Um, so I would be for that, but um, the add alternate four. So instead of doing the the underground tank, we're just going to tie into the sewer system, um, and it's a preventative to the amount of pumping that we would have to do. It sounds to me like it would be the right thing to do. Obviously, I know people are going to be saying, "Well, what if we don't go back to school?" Um, we we need to make this decision this evening, correct? That's correct, and the reason okay. being. I need we need to move forward with this, and I I'm assuming school is coming back in session in September. I have to be on that. That's the only way we can operate. So I'm assuming that school will start in September, and I have to have these portables up and running, uh, including sanitary, so I can get sign off from uh, the building officials in the city. And, and I absolutely agree, and I absolutely agree with that. Um, so I, I don't have a problem, but I just want to make it clear that we're now tying into the current sewer system within the school and we're not going to be doing these tanks. That's um, correct. And, and that does great. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Mrs. Brown. Thank you. I actually, I'm in favor of this also. That's what I was going to mention. And also 
just out of curiosity, once that, um, that tie-in is there and the portables are removed and we've moved on with this project, do you just cap that line? And is that like an access point that we could use someday in the future for some other thing? Or is that, does it have to be removed? I don't want to talk to the city sewer department, but we could technically disconnect it. We'll obviously disconnect it at the portables, but we'd have to disconnect it at the manhole also. I don't think they'd want that line to remain live. Yeah, I don't know if, happen. I don't know if there a water fountain next to the football <laughs> field or something. I don't even know, but. <laughs> no, we would not, I don't see the need to go back and dig it up and remove it. It's a okay. question of just properly terminating it based on what the city sewer department would, would require. Just cap it. If you ever make the school even bigger, you might need it. But, uh, Mrs. Raymond, did you want to make the motion? It would. Um, yes, I certainly will. So um, the motion is to approve the contract to the Frechette Brothers of Manchester in the amount of $700,006. And that includes the four um, additional options. Excellent. Any other questions on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? I'm sorry, uh, my phone's going off. Um, oh, sorry. All right. Um, Alderman 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 Dowd. Yes. Um, Alderman Harriet Gathright. Yes. Alderman Clee. Yes. Great music. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alderman Lou. Yes. Alderman Wilshire. Yes. Ms. Bishop. Yes. Ms. Brown. Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Ms. Reno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Sorry, I clicked out. Yes. Okay, motion carries, I believe, uh, unanimously. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, okay, we're back to Ken. Okay. Uh, so now that's it for fairgrounds tonight. We'll move over to Petachuk for the uh, early security upgrades that we're doing this summer. Uh, we'll start with um, the replacement of the existing drive sprinkler system. So for those who aren't familiar, we've been having some issues with the existing drive sprinkler system leaking. Um, so I just want to note that this scope has evolved over the last two months. Um, so uh, the, the package that's being submitted tonight is a total of $128,135, and it's comprised of four separate cost proposals that are part of the of the background that has has come across our the table over the last two months. Um, so uh, the first the first item is the the price for number two schedule 40 block iron main piping replacement branch lines will remain in place for $100,100. The second part of the proposal is to remove and replace the spring-loaded heads at the front and rear canopies for $5,955. The third part of the proposal is to revise calculations on the Schedule 40 main piping. That's for $3,000. That's engineering costs. And the, the final piece of the price is to upsize the sprinkler mains due to the revised flow test data that was provided to us for $19,080. Um, there is this this quote is being uh, recommended to Capital Fire Protection, who I believe did the original install. And um, so there is no there is no bid proposal bid comparison here. This is just a quote that we received from Capital Fire Protection. And, if you, add, and if you add up the four numbers, it's the, four, the total of the four numbers is one hundred and twenty eight thousand one hundred and thirty five dollars. Okay, as, as you, um, I'm sure the Board of Ed people know, we've had continual problems with that dry system up in the um, in the attic part of Penichuk School. It's a dry, it's called a dry system because it's dry until they test it uh, or it actually fires off and then water fills it. Uh, when they're done with the test, the water drains out. The problem is the residual water over the years. It's been, I forget how many years it's been, Sean, 28 years? No? 
Well, the school was uh, occupied originally in 1988, I believe. Okay. So uh, 32 years. So it's it's probably at the lifespan of, of that system. And and by the way, it's it's a life safety issue and it's critical to the school. Uh, without that system, uh, I doubt they let the school open. Uh, so we've got to fix that system and, and do it right. So I'd like a motion to approve the contract, the capital fire protection for $128,135. I'll so, make that motion. Alderman Klee made the motion. Any further discussion on the motion? Yes, Mrs. Raymond. I just wanted to um, echo your statement that this is, this is absolutely necessary. Um, we cannot continue to have um, floods in our classrooms. It's not safe for the students and um, we have to do it. So there yeah, it is. We, we, we don't wanna be spending a lot of money in renovating the school and having it flood. Plus uh, I did try to get the city's risk management to pay for it, but they pay for the damage after the thing lets go rather than trying to prevent it. So we will cover it. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call a roll? Okay. On the motion, all, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Um, Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Sorry about that. Yes. Uh, Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Ken? Ken. Okay, the next package that we're uh, proposing is the mechanical package, HVAC at Penichuk. Um, it's our, we intend to award the HVAC scope to Eckhart and Johnson. Uh, they are the low bid of three bids received. Uh, they're also based out of Hooksett, New Hampshire, and the total value of this contract is $20,170. Okay. The uh, contract being proposed is Eckhart Johnson uh, for the HIVAC system for Penetrac in the amount of $20,170. Any discussion on, would somebody like to make the motion first? I'll make the motion. Alderman Wilshire made the motion. Any discussion? Okay, sounds, would the clerk please call the roll? On the motion, um, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Klee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Oh, yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries 10 to 0 unanimously. Great. And by the way, when we're going through, because we're going to address a lot of these as we go along, but if, if there are any questions about any terminology that you don't understand as we go through these motions, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what HIVAC is, but uh, if, if, if there are any things that you want to explain, please feel free to ask. Ken? Yeah, and I, I echo that. If you if anyone has any questions, please just feel free to, to wave and stop me, and I'll I'll try to answer your question best as best as I can. Uh, so the, the the final two packages are related to the security grant, and as Mr. Smith noted earlier, um, he'd like to kind of take the floor on this issue. So, uh, Mr. Smith, I'll let you I'll let you begin, and then I'll jump in when you when you need me to. Okay, thanks. Um, just to remind everybody, we received the grant for the security vestibule at Penichuk Middle School for $55,000. Um, and uh, to add to the work that Harvey's already doing, it made a lot more sense to work with them as part of this construction project to achieve what we wanted to do. So the Board of Ed actually already approved the $55,000. Oh. Um, and their motion had something to do with, uh, we approved $55,000, understanding there was an additional $3,000, $4,000 that the middle school project would pay. 
Um, so, given that, you, you already approved um, the transaction window at the last meeting. That was $12,345. So I would suggest to you that you don't need to approve the uh, doors, frames, and hardware, uh, because that effectively has already been approved by the Board of Debt. Uh, it's $30,700. Um, and I can sign or doubt or somebody in the school district can sign that uh, bid award. So that brings us to the security vestibule glass. Um, you add that to the total, uh, it comes to $59,630. And again, we uh, have already had the Board of Ed approve $55,000. So really all we need uh, from the joint special tonight is approval for uh, $4,630 from the bonded money that the project received. And um, that may sound like the new math, so I'd be happy to answer any questions on how I arrived at those numbers if there are any. Sean, that money would be covered for work with Harvey Construction, correct? Correct, and the Board of Ed already approved a Purchase order to them for uh, fifty-five thousand at Panachuk plus seventy-five thousand at uh, Fairgrounds Middle School. Mm -hmm. Okay, Alderman Clee, you have a question? Y yes, um, I, I just uh, just for clarification, more for the public. So this four thousand six hundred and thirty that um, we're going to be taking from the middle school project um, is is that kind of like a matching funds, or is that just the difference between? what we got for a grant and what the actual cost is. Yes. Yes, the second, it's the difference. Right. It's the, it's the difference from, uh, so it's just the difference that, that we're just kicking in. And and I think this is great and I, I appreciate it. So I just wanted to clarify that, thank you. Just for further clarification, if we didn't get this money from the state, we'd be paying for the entire security upgrade. But since the state was nice enough to give us this money, it's not having to be spent out of the bond. Mm -hmm. Any other yes. question? We do need a motion, however. Yeah. Wouldn't like to make the motion for. I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. So uh, the motion would be to uh, have the Joint Special School Building Committee approve the additional, what was the amount, Sean? 4000 $4,630. $4,630 for the completion of the work on the security vestibule at Panachuk. Any other questions on that? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Okay. On the motion, Alder, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. All the woman Lou? Yes. All the woman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Ken? Alderman Dowd, that is all I have for this evening. Uh, as Mr. Dubois noted earlier, uh, we're going to have a, a, a number, a good number of these over the next few weeks. So um, we appreciate everybody's time tonight. Yes, as uh, as they price out the work uh, from the drawing provided by Harriman, uh, Harvey does the the uh, the bidding. We get the bids, and like we did tonight, we approve each one of the contracts. And believe me, there'll be a bunch of these as we <laughs> as we go through this project. Um, Okay, anything else, uh, Carl, from Harvey? No, I think we're good. Okay. Saying that, uh, construction managers, subcontracts, uh, invoices. Sean? Yes, um, so on our agenda, actually, we have approval of pre approved subcontracts. Uh, before the invoices. So if you yeah, like, I'll, I'll go through those. Um, to to uh, repeat what you all probably already know, the chairman of the joint special has the authority to approve up to $50,000 of changes as, as they come um, to the contract. 
and I have approval of five thousand um, dollars. Whenever I have the need to, and that's these usually for emergency reasons. Uh, can't wait for our next meeting, um, or it's something that uh, RV construction is right in the middle of and has to get get to get a move on again before the next meeting. So uh, Alderman Dowd approved uh, two projects. One was for architectural millwork at Penichuk to Auburn Woodworking, the amount of $20,671. Um, so what we're looking for tonight is the, the joint specials approval of that decision and- The verification. Yes. All right, we're gonna take them one at a time. So um, do I have a motion to uh, approve the, the contract that I signed for that amount? So moved. Okay, Harry Gothright made the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Okay, on the motion, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gothright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Yes. Uh, motion carries unanimously. Okay. Again, these are things that just need to be authorized before the next meeting to speed this along so we don't get delays in the in the contract or things that come up as an emergency and need to be done right away so we don't have people standing around waiting for another joint special meeting. And, and it's within the limits that Mr. Smith stated. You have another one, Mr. Smith? Yes, I actually have a, two more, or three more, excuse me. Uh, so Alderman Dowd approved uh, a contract to advance building services for demolition at Panachuk Middle School, the amount of $6,200. This work was specifically uh, earmarked for the security vestibule, which um, is the work is about to start imminently by Harvey. Okay, would somebody like to make the motion to approve, to verify? I'll make the motion. Alderman Wilshire has made the motion. Any questions? Again, we had uh, the security vestibules because that money runs out and because there's long leads on these items and, and or securing contractors that are picking up work faster than we want them to. Uh, uh, we need to get these things moving. So that was the reason behind this particular motion. Any other discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Okay, uh, on the motion, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Uh, Mr. Reno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Smith? Okay, the next one, uh, because we are starting the construction work at Fairgrounds Middle School, we have to move a lot of material um, both out of the office into other spaces in the school, also vacating some classrooms for Harvard to begin their work. So we had to um, provide some what we call ground storage units. These are 40 foot long steel storage units, not on wheels, just on the ground um, to put classroom furniture, books, things that aren't currently being used. Um, so we are recommending we approve a purchase order to Page Street Rental, the amount of $3,000. Okay, again, this is, uh, we had to get these in place because we we're gonna start tearing down part of fairgrounds and we had to get the things moved out of there so that they could do the work. Uh, as we go through this project, we will be renting a number of things as like we have with all of our other school renovations from 
from page to allow storage, uh, temporary storage while the work's being done. So need a motion to verify and approve the uh, contract to page rental for $3,000. I'll make that motion. All the motion made the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? On the motion, uh, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gaffright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Greeno votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Okay, one more uh, that I have, and that is uh, related to security. As all of you are probably aware, when you go to any of our schools, the main entrance, you push a button and you announce yourself to the people in the office, pass muster, then they push a button and let you in. Uh, so because we're going to be dismantling the current entrance at Fairgrounds Middle School, and as you're facing the school, there's entrance on the far left-hand side of that courtyard. That'll become the temporary main entrance. So we needed to take the security uh, equipment off of the current main entrance and move it to the temporary main entrance. And to do that, uh, Allied Universal Technology gave us a quote of $3,587.89. And I recommend we approve that. Okay, would somebody like to make that motion? So moved. So moved by Alderman Harriet Gothray. Any questions? Seeing none, yes. the clerk please call the roll. Okay, on the motion. I, I think Alderwoman oh. Lou had her hand up. Oh. Sorry, I didn't Sorry. want to interrupt. I just don't, I'm not seeing the figure and could you repeat it for me, please? Yes, um, 3,587 dollars and 89 cents. Oh, thank you. Okay, any other questions? The clerk call the roll. On the motion, uh, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gathright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries uh, unanimously. Thank you. Sean, do you have anything else? Uh, just the invoice approval. Okay. You want to um, read those? Okay. Again, I, I point out to everybody that we sent out the revised financial sheets um, this week. And if you look at the sheet that I, I sent out, it's uh, bottom left-hand side, it's construction financial report 6-2020-A. Uh, if it doesn't have the A, then you're looking at the old one. So uh, I'll, the numbers are actually also on your agenda with one exception. So I recommend approval of invoices to Harriman in a total of $242,776.85. Sean, are you going to do the entire project on the one sheet rather than each individual school? Yes. Okay. I mean, yes. I mean, I, I could do each school if you'd like. Well, the, I think the people can see the individual schools by just looking at the individual school invoices, but we can do it at the, at the, at the high level. And, right. And it's also the individual schools are listed on the agenda. Um, so again, $242,776.85 to Harriman, to Turner Building Science, who's our commissioning agent, uh, $6,600. And the final one is to Page Street Rentals for $570. That pays for two of the ground storage units, uh, deli delivery and the eventual pickup uh, when the project is complete. And the total amount? And the total amount is $249,946.85. Okay, so I need a motion to approve paying the, the invoices to Harriman A&E for the amount of 
$776.85. The Turner Building Sciences, $6,600. Page Rental, $570 for a total of $249,946.85. Well, I see a motion. So moved. Who said that? Oh, Mrs. Brown. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, any discussion on the invoices? Seeing no, none. That's good. Would the clerk call a roll? Hey, okay, on the motion, Alda Alderman Dowd. Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Daffright. Yes. Alderwoman Clee. Yes. Alderwoman Lou. Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire. Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Giulio? Yes. Mr. Garino votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, I would now open it up for any members of the public that uh, might have a comment. Please just state your name and address for the record if you have any questions. Does someone have a question? I think um, Ms. Ms. Lenardi is uh, trying to speak. I see that she's unmuted herself. Mr. Right. Chair. They can't hear her. Hmm. Jeff, do we, can you hear them? I have unmuted her so she can speak. She, she may is just she... be listening in on the meeting. OK. No questions. Anyone else? Seeing and hearing no one? Oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> this is wrong. All right. So no public input. Uh, now comments by committee members. Mrs. Brown? Thank you, Mr. Dowd. Uh, is this the right forum to ask where we stand on the access roads um, to the new middle school? Um, it would be, but because it's in the hands of two lawyers, I can't say anything. Okay, so there is some movement on that. Oh, there is definitely, yes. Thank you. It's, it's, they work in the T's and C's. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Do I have a motion? Alderman Wilshire? Move to adjourn. Motion is to adjourn. Will the clerk please call the roll? Hey, on the motion to adjourn. Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderwoman Harriet Gaffright? Yes. Alderwoman Clee? Yes. Alderwoman Lou? Yes. Alderwoman Wilshire? Yes. Ms. Bishop? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Julio? Yes. Marino votes yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. And we're adjourned at 8.28 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good You're night. welcome. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.